definitely a lot of exciting matches here right now. And here we go, Zeno and Classic Metal in the lobby. This is going to be, this is a hard one to kind of predict from the beginning. I mean, as, as we know, for anyone just now tuning in, Zeno uh, is a big player in the community. He's like the official balance consultant for Pocket Watch Games. Uh, Classic Metal also uh, been around for a long time. He's a mod in the Discord. I'm sure he was playing during the alpha. And both these players have like pretty, pretty standard uh, play styles. Classic Metal kind of favoring these big squirrel balls. And Zeno just kind of favoring whatever lets him get into a longer, more drawn out game and hopefully get some of those awesome tier three units out. Yep, and here we go. Into the drafting stream we go, ladies and gentlemen, for this final set of the day here. <laughs> all right, oh, please so... Please tell me he's memeing. Please tell me he's memeing here. Okay, good. He's all memeing. right, he's... <laughs> I'm just like, no, you're not going to play that deck. No way. That's all right, not, he's, taking, that's he's like, taking a page out of Chip's book. He's going with the old new. Chip deck. Zeno, don't do that. So we have I've, got. I've seen. Okay, I've seen Zeno lose hard because he like last minute decided to change the different units. But like, no, he need the way he wins is that he has to be very consistent in his decks. So that's how he wins. So he's he's got yeah. I mean he's got this just strong playstyle. I don't think he's the best meme lord when it comes to just taking out this <laughs> random random crap, uh, playing the random decks and doing well with it. He's just got this like great great strong defensive like very aware of what his opponent's doing and he's got he's got a great read on the game and so excited to see both of them kind of taking taking the chip deck except classic metal playing with the one that i think he's been for most of this tournament uh kind of swaps between skunks and snakes but the four tier one seems to be his favored choice yep and here we go game one already underway classic metal to the east as Zeno Cube takes his spot in the west side of the map here very flat map with very few obstructions there is a giant lake in front of Classic Metal's base, so it does create a slight choke point for Classic Metal to walk through, but it's not the worst thing to happen for him. There's Sometimes a lot of like, road. Yeah, that can be tough for both players, like depending on the engagement, if Zeno's able to maybe even get that gristmill right in front of him or just position his army in such a way that he that he gets a good contain on Classic Metal, it can be a great point of advantage or disadvantage. It, it all depends on the decisions of, of, of both players here, of course. See, this could have been a great... This could have been a great structure deck for Zeno. <laughs> yeah, probably. Done that, but oh well. See, you commit to your memes, man. That's that's the lesson of the day. That that will be the lesson of this tournament. <laughs> <if you're... laughs> but in any case, both sides going to be going off of a very um, very safe openings here. Just eight far like the Warrens, eight farms count. So both sides just making sure they get their army values up, defending. They also have their economies up as well to make sure that they have a nice, strong army going for themselves right now. You know, keep opting for pigeons and p pigeons and squirrels as Classic Metal going for the Squizzards. Yeah, always Classic Metal, I really think, because this is something that, that I was doing early on, I kind of liked the play. He seems to really take these just-in-case lizards uh, just to see what his opponent takes to be able to fend off any of those corner farm harass attempts and then and then later on moves into a squirrel ball. But he's going to throw down a skunk warren now. It's a good time to do it. You have your units up, and you're, you know, you see that your opponent's running mostly squirrels. A very good opportunity to bring up your skunks up to just pressure out the opponent. And Zeno also going to go for skunks himself here. So, pretty much, uh, just this nice little ball of units to just defend the skunks for both sides. Indeed, yeah, the timing here shouldn't matter too much. It looks like Xeno Skunks are obviously going to be a little bit later, but with how slow they are, by the time by the time they get across the map, if Classic Metal decides to move out, uh, he'll have at least one Skunk out and probably the second nearly ready by the time he gets there. So both players oh. in a pretty pretty indefensible oh. position. Classic Metal yeah. he posturing. Wants mill. He wants that Take mill. It. The Ninja there's, Mill. There's no pressure on him right now, so it's a free mill for him, and it's very out of the way for Xeno you know, to actually really scout and think about. Although, he's played against people who have done these proxy mills a lot, so he should be thinking about it, maybe. So. I think I think some, a lot of players, like, it, it pairs really well if Classic Metal kind of, like, starts to pretend like he's going to move out, because then it, it removes your ability to run around the map too terribly much. Even though you can burrow home, it can be a risk to take a random path around the map to see what they're doing. But I think the most likely thing here is Zeno might be able to sniff out uh, a money differential like if he starts to notice like wait classic metal should have a little bit more than i see then that might prompt him to move out but uh in general i think this is a really good play right now because well, the nice thing here though is that their unit count is almost identical 
Yeah. yeah, this is a this is a tough read for Zeno. Like he's I don't know if there's classic metals doing much that's going to give him the impression that he is going up to four farms on a new base. <laughs> Zeno, he only just got his second expansion. Like Zeno has a lot. So the thing about this, it's not too terrible if Zeno doesn't find it. He has a lot of safe expansion choices to go for. And classic metal, it's actually on the onus of classic metal to go for these kind of far off proxy bases just to make sure that he has farms safely. But these players are like is... matching their timing. Yeah, they're both going up to four skunks now, same time. Look, these these two players have played against each other a lot. Oh, he's gonna oh, find it. Zeno, Zeno finds, finds it. it. What can he do anything about it though? That's the dangerous thing is that if Zeno does rush for that expansion, classic metal is in the prime position to just attack Zeno's base. Well, Classics, he's got to know when Zeno moves out, because right now, since it's so far away, if you're not having some great map awareness, uh, the best situation for Classic is if he sees Zeno moving out rather than sees him when he gets to the base, because there there is a chance that with a rush distance, rush dist dist Zeno could rush back in time to defend before Classic Metal can get some serious work done. But he's getting that other gristmill. He's going to set up that kind of forward position and get ready to maybe make a push. And right now, Zeno's just filled up his own farms. He's actually outmatching Classic Metal, who hasn't filled up his second expansion yet. So he is definitely going to start to soar on ahead. But oh, Classic Metal brings his units south. He thought he suspected a um, an attack coming from Zeno, but not quite. And now that's a kind of unfortunate position. Classic Metal's up front, so he has to make this attack right now. But he loses the, the toads from Zeno's side, doing a very nice job of fending them off for the time being. So he has to run back. And this is just going to allow Zeno to just get all of that fat food here for himself that was a tough position to run up that that ramp creates a pretty pretty intense choke and with uh with six toads against for for xeno that just that really those toads are putting in even more work than they normally do on a wide open field and so class metal's gonna see if he can make something happen again yeah, so interesting thing about skunk versus skunk interactions is that if you get your gas down first you actually are able to stop the skunk from hitting that space but right now, we're going to see the skunk do what happens between the two of them, but Zeno also has snakes on the side here. Is he going to be able to do enough damage with the skunks from the side? Classic Metal, Classic Metal trying to push his way up forward with his double skunks. They're being, both being healed up by the pigeons, but unfortunately, he also loses the pigeons as well. He only has one skunk left. No, no skunks left. Classic Metal has to pull out. He's overcommitted himself here, trying to take out the units, but it's not enough. Gosh, you know, there was a brief moment where I think Classic Metal was in a good spot. It's so hard to read that. Even as a caster, it's hard to tell exactly what's going on with that much skunk gas going down. But that fight was going well, but then it just hit a certain point where uh, I think the Warrens were taking enough damage that uh, Zeno took took a huge advantage and ended up getting the better half of that engagement. The problem is that Zeno's units are very, very easily reinforced themselves just with how close they are to that battlefield. So it's not a big loss for Zeno to lose units because he's able to get them back very fast. And because he's sitting on so much farms right now, he can reinforce very quickly. Yeah, That's 11 to possible. 11 to 8 right now. And uh, that five minute mark having long passed, these these initial farms are burning out on their main bases. And so they're going to have to just kind of sit back onto what expansions they've taken since then. And this is really bad. Zina can actually apply pressure with his snakes now. But he's going to try to rush the snakes, takes out one snake, able to get back just in time. His lizard's doing enough damage. And Zeno, he he's going to poke out his head out just a little bit here. Let's see, he can choke it out! All oh, that red gas! It's perfect positioning coming out from Zeno, taking out all the skunks on the side, taking out the squirrels as a bonus as well. Perfect positioning coming out from Zeno, just, just demolishing Cosmo's army as he was trying to retreat back just a little bit further. But red gas just stopping everything from moving on forward. He's gonna take out this expansion here in the front. Not a big loss for Classic Metal, but he's, he has like really many units on the field right now. Man, that brings up a really good question that I have about skunks now. Having I haven't played with them too much, but I think this four skunk push from Zeno is a really great idea. And so when they shoot their gas, if they all shoot in the exact same spot, does the gas like spread out? Because either these skunks are targeting brilliantly or that's what's happening because he's getting such a spread of this skunk gas so quickly. Yeah, he's just, just that sheer number of gas spreading out so fast. It just makes it hard for Classic Mode to actually position himself in the right position here. And it just ends up him choking out. And once, I mean, over time, you just see Classic Metal just overextending his stay. And usually just because of he, the positions he finds himself in, like that first thing where he thought that Xena was probably going for a Southern attack. He moved his units across the water for defense, but unfortunately, that also means he kind of commits his units to crossing that water. Yeah, man, so, truly, do you, do you know how Skunk Gas works? Were they just happening to target really well? In that initial engagement, they just kind of, uh, they just seem to immediately cover Classic Metal's entire army in gas. Yeah, it's so just, 
four skunks spread a lot of gas. That's like the magic number of skunks you want to just have a huge amount of gas on the field. And because of how fast it's spreading, it just makes it hard for a class to actually counterattack with his own skunks. He only has two skunks and they're not going to be outputting as much gas. And that gas is definitely going to be stifled out by the opponents. So just Zeno with his farm game, just just like ha just outnumbering Classic Metal at this point because Classic Metal just kind of trying to commit to attacks and they're just not working out for him. He overstays his welcome and just ends up losing too much value. That was really cool. I mean, usually you see you see very few players go up all the way to four skunks, but I think we saw a great benefit to it there, especially with a with a large tier one army from from his opponent. And here we go, game number two between Classic Metal and Zeno Oku right now here as Classic Metal goes to the south and Zeno to the north side here. As both of them, very open field this time compared to the last one. They're farther apart, but Classic Metal has a better better position this time. And this time completely going for mirrored builds. Uh, these players, it's just who, who wore it better, BTM? That's what this match is going to answer. <laughs> I mean, that, that's usually how it comes down to is that eventually you see this like sort of mini meta pop up between these players and you can see that these guys are starting to heavily favor skunks. If they can get their skunk numbers out in time, it heavily stifles the opponent's tier 1 army just because of how how popular tier 1 units have to be in order to make a difference in these, in these matchups. And it's it, it's a safe bet because, you know, depending on your, your confidence and skill level, skill level as a player, it's just kind of... You, you know what to expect from your opponent because very, very frequently the person who won the game usually goes with the same match. Like, why, don't don't fix something that isn't broken. Uh, sometimes people switch up for mind games, but on average, if you win a match, you're going to go back into the next one with the same or very similar deck. The real key here, though, are these pigeons here that these, these guys are having both picking up. These pigeons are basically what allows skunks to function because, as I said before, skunks love games that go for, a, love matches that go for a long time. They love battles that just, like, forever just seem to always constantly happen because it allows them to spread the gas much more. So having those pigeons there to support the skunk, to support the unit, to keep them alive for these longer engagements, is, is just a benefit for the skunk. It absolutely is, and again, that was just that just kind of showed you in these in these longer, kind of slower army compositions where the fights are a little bit longer and the retreats are a little bit more difficult. Skunks just really tend to shine because they're great at these sort of defensive retreats because you can kind of stutter step them, so they lay down gas that your opponent has to run through, and then they're really great the longer a fight goes on. And so you can you can really micro them well and get some good stuff going. Classic metal going for a really early grist mill. Yep, he's going to try to out farm Zeno at this point. Once again, to nice little grist mills very far away for Xeno to really scout out, but Xeno is going to go straight into the Skunks and as well Classic Metal, so both sides just on the heels of each other right now. The only difference here is that Classic Metal will have a Grist Mill and some farm, extra farms for himself, so once again, he's starting to pull on ahead in terms of the farm game, but Xeno will see this. He will, he will check it out, yeah. Take that mill. Because I don't, I don't, I'm trying to like think from the times I've seen him stream and all that stuff, like Xeno isn't usually the guy who moves out first, and so this no. is a bit of a... He is a super macro player. Like, he yeah. plays like Artosis wants to play, basically. <laughs> yeah, so he's just, he's all about like, <laughs> all right, I see you expand. I'm not going to capitalize. I'm just going to try to do it better. And so yeah, he definitely, saying, Classic Metal playing the metagame here. I want to have units here, and you can't do anything about them right now. I'm just going to build stuff behind them. But here we go. Zeno is going to be the first one to move out. He's going to be moving his skunks up very aggressively right now, trying to see if he can put them out here. But it's going to be Classic Metal who fires out the skunk gas first. Both sides, well, actually, it's only going to be Zeno who has pigeons out right now, so this is actually really big for Zeno if he's able to keep that skunk alive and just keep continually pressure Classic Metal, who doesn't have pigeons. So he's going to have to be very pressed to keep these scores alive, has to disengage them to make sure they're nice and healthy. Losing that freshly spawned skunk is pretty painful for Classic Metal. Those those 60 food units really add up over time. Uh-oh. Uh, Zeno left his units there. Luckily, they're pretty self-sufficient, hopefully. <laughs> a little bit, little bit scary situation. Zeno has to go back to just direct his units, make sure they don't accidentally uh, get themselves killed here in this case. But Cosmo does have fewer units here in terms of uh, number of skunks right now, and Zeno is starting to choke him out. A lot of skunk gas making its way forward, and you can see, you can see what Zeno's trying to do is like he's trying to put his pos position his own units inside the skunk gas, and it just makes it really hard for Cosmo's own skunks to actually shoot into it. So it's a, actually a safe position to be in your own gas. And a little bit, it, I mean, I think there's an aspect of the game where it's hard to judge and estimate what, how the battle's going. 
because there's so much, like the players are seeing the same things we're seeing, and so if you can't tell what the heck's going on under the skunk gas, then you might not know when to retreat or when to continue to push forward, and so Zeno might be taking advantage of this stuff. And we see these super forward aggressive warrens from from Zeno. He likes to see, he seems to enjoy putting down like an intense front line where it's like, I'm going to keep my units here so that you don't even have a chance to run around and harass my base. He kind of has to do this though, just because of how spaced his bills are. So if he does lose engagements, he has to make sure there are units to reinforce very quickly here. And this is like one of those cases where he has to put them as far forward as possible, defending his class mode. It, it also, again, it really helps that the Warren HP got buffed by 10 points. That's a lot. And because skunks can't kill buildings, that's even better when you're facing up against skunks is to have these Warrens out on front. Absolutely. That, that early fight went like very very slightly in Zeno's favor but as we're moving into this mid game here classic metal finds himself up by one farm and the army values are pretty much dead even it makes me wonder if we're gonna see a badger coming up very soon but Zeno is actually gonna go for the double as we saw earlier he's gonna go for the double skunks and some snakes as well classic metal gonna respond in turn he's completely um got rid of his frogs oh there we go there's the badger big mama badger making its way to the battlefield right now classic metal has about 80 seconds to hold on and wait, and Zeno is not going to be able to scout this one out. Not the position he put it in. Absolutely. This Badger has been paroled, and she is going to break out of prison in style, coming into the army of classic metal. I think that this is a really great choice for uh, for this composition, because they have almost entirely, not only do they have mirrored builds, but they have mirrored armies now at this point. So Zeno kind of favoring a heavy squirrel and pigeon composition, whereas classic metal's like, nah, I'm going to bring in the heavy hitter and see if a Badger can compensate for a uh, for more tier one and for the most part i i like the move because skunks it doesn't matter how many skunks you have they don't do any more damage oh. they just spread out the area that their damage is being dealt plus was a little bit too enthusiastic about building his units out he accidentally supply blocked his badger so he had to go sell off a pigeon warrant to make sure that it was building in time but it looks like now it's currently building up 30 seconds left to go for this badger to be up and running and xeno has is completely unaware he went for this very aggressive mill and trying to just pressure up right now. Just push Classic Metal into a corner. Well, that throwing down, up. Yeah, throwing down scary. these three farms is uh could be could be a difficult move. I mean obviously Zeno doesn't even know this badger's coming out, so it's not like he he is aware. He doesn't have perfect information of what's going on, but uh, us as casters, these three farms might be much better as warrants. Uh... Crap. You know, I heard about this bug. Some people oh, were saying this was happening on the public test branch. Man. What just happened? BTM, let's just pretend how awesome that game was about. <laughs> because it was going to be... You know what? Everyone in chat, just like... Everyone, I want everyone to just like close your eyes for a minute and imagine how phenomenal <laughs> that game would have been that we will now never see. Wow. It's like that buying that mail was an instant lose. <laughs> Yeah, right now I'm just I'm just gonna like, watch. No, I made the worst decision possible. Oh, no, it's that's a crash, unfortunately. And, oh, that was gonna be a very fun game to watch, but unfortunately. So we need to convince these players to play the exact same game up seven minutes. Just <laughs> <laughs> we'll we will referee no it. No attacking. Tonight. Wait until that badger, badger comes up and Zeno's like, wait, what badger? <laughs> Gosh darn it. Uh, I believe so. Uh, Pocket Watch is in the chat. I believe they're saving all the replays. Pocket Watch, so I think that you guys will be able to get your hands on this one. Uh, oh. Pretty rough one for for the casters and spectators. Uh, that was a real, that was a real blue ball moment for Tooth and Tail. But we will be probably probably rematching. I assume. I mean, there's no clear winner right there. <laughs> no, they have to rematch at this point. But oh, <laughs> I bought a mill and I lost. <laughs> The new feature of the game, if you make the wrong decision, the game automatically punishes you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> even, even, so Pocket Watch games, you know, seek, so uh, their public face, they say they, they want to push this game towards, you know, 12, 15 minute games with macro, <laughs> but really, they put this suicide bug in there. It's like, whoa, Zeno, you trying to take this another mill? Psych. Uh, well, actually, they, he like, won, right? He won based on that surrender? That's what I saw. I saw that Zeno won <laughs> you know, in Classic like, Metal. This is basically the dive kick of RTS games, basically. If you make the wrong like tactical decision in your timings and your builds, you just lose automatically. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, the timing oh. alert got alarmed uh, from Tooth and Tail, and it just had to put, a, put an end to that game. It was going to be... The hype was too real for that game. There must be a that threshold be a to be crossed. A very interesting thing, because that Badger was about to go up. <laughs> I guess... 
That would have been an issue for several reasons. For one is that because they have very equal army, the value for class is huge all alone. That batch has plenty of units to rev up on. Yeah, that would have been that would have been quite a fight. Like I think it, it was it really was gonna like those two armies. You, no one was gonna be able to predict what was gonna happen with those two armies. It was all gonna come down to the actual engagement, positioning, micro, and everything. Because that would have been a that would have been pretty neat. Because there's no you, you could throw those two armies against each other ten times out of ten, and you wouldn't really it, they, it would be a coin toss of who wins. But depending on where the focus fire comes from the squirrels and where that skunk glass lands. That would have been exciting to see. Well, hopefully these two players are like <laughs> ready to give us uh, an equally good show as that one could have been. And we'll just wait up for Classic Metal to ready up and hop into this uh, second game here. The Xeno is up 1-0 to zero currently. There is a... Okay, so there's a threading crash in the butchering sound effects on the gristmill. And I think what happened was that one of the... Was, was it a bacteria that happened with it? I don't know. Like, maybe it bugged out for a spectator, and when he left, it all crashed and died. I don't know. This is a really weird bug I've never seen before, personally. So, I, I don't know the inner workings of how this happened, but here we go, guys. Well, this time, they're much farther out from each other, but what is this base? Classic Metal in the corner to the west side, as you know, to the east side on open plains. This is a very weird map just because of, like, how closed off it is for Classic Metal. You know what else it is, BTM? A completely even map. If this, uh, if that bridge that Classic Metal just crossed becomes the sort of dividing line, they each have three grist mills to their name to expand Zeno's to. like on the low so... ground like, no! Why is there no path here? I want to <laughs> go down this way, no! And this like, this oh, may turn into an even better potential game than the previous one if these like, players decide to macro up. That bridge, oh man, this would have been a fantastic game to bring ferrets on, but unfortunately both sides stick with the same have to stick with the same deck due to replay rules. So, no ferrets, shenanigans here, but both sides, man. Like, neither side, you can't do a rush on this map just because of how far spaced they are, that giant river in between them. Only one lane, one bridge in between. This is just too much for a rush. So the both sides just gonna go for the eight farm. Well, especially for their unit choices, because uh, again, I don't know how many new players we have, but uh, water cobblestone speeds up your units by a hundred percent, and water slows them down by oh, well fifty percent rather. So you move half speed in water and twice speed on cobblestone. So since none of these players have swift units, the water is gonna be a major uh, slowdown for either of them, and so it's pretty dangerous to try to engage in such a big open body. And right now, Xenocoop just going to scout out his opponent, making sure there's no sneaky tier 3s, because this is definitely a map where you can just sneak a tier 3 so easily. The scout distance is so far that we might indeed see that. Xeno is going up to a tier 2 warn super early. Immediately. Yeah, he. I think he understands the choke point there that is across this, this base is here, so he needs to take control of it as soon as possible to prevent Class Milk from overtaking him. So Skunk's really nice nice choice, and especially with how early game, early this is. Coxmel just has squirrels at the moment. But he will see the tier two come out. So I wonder I'm if we're gonna, gonna see I wonder if we're gonna see Zeno kind oh, of move yep. forward across. Oh this there it is! Oh, there it is! The badger three. rush! I knew it! We will yet see a badger today, ladies and gents. But it's gonna come out enough time. There are not enough defenses to stop Zeno from actually scouting this one out, so he is gonna see this tier three. So he has to discourage Zeno right now from scouting. Get out, Zeno. Get out. Oh, no, he sees it. <laughs> sees it right away. away. Zeno has to react now. And I would say just start building snakes or build your own badger. But looks like he's just going to respond by building more squirrels, it looks like. I don't know if he knows what that tier 3 unit is. Yeah, he can't. I mean, he might be predicting. I guess he didn't see it. So, yeah, obviously these players can't Maybe see each other's decks. Uh, the most common guess is a badger. Yeah, he could... Good thing. So Zeno, I've seen a few games where Zeno tries to overrun a Fox player by expanding and just getting a ton of squirrels out. So it, it looks like that might be the the opinion that he's taking. Um, gosh, I think yeah, I think snakes are typically a bit better against badgers. But again, it all it all comes down to where and how this engagement takes place. But Zeno's going to look to make an engagement before that happens. All right, here we go right now. Zeno approaching with his skunks on the front lines has the help of pigeons to hit the high ground here. I'm trying to choke out the economy, but that badger is five seconds away from being done. Here it comes. Big Mama Badger making its way to the battlefield. And here we go. Will Zeno be able to choke out this base before he's able to defend it? 
He's gonna try to take some of the shots, but here comes the Badger taking out one skunk. He's gonna take out the second skunk as well, and we'll be chasing Zeno out of the base. And Zeno just realizes how much he's lost here. And this chase is not gonna stop. This is going all the way across the map. Classic Metal has gone down to four farms to eight, so he has to win off the back of this with nine pigeons in a flock protecting a badger. With pigeons the way they are currently, he's in a pretty good spot, but Zeno is resupplying pretty quickly. He doesn't have any burst units. He doesn't have anything to actually stop this. And one of the custom metal has scrolls to take the front line. He has pigeons to heal up the badger. And this is just going to allow the badger to just do way too much damage right now. Zeno's scrolls are getting chomped down to bits one by one. There go the Warrens now next. And there's just nothing Zeno can do about this badger rush. I think he just scouted out the wrong tier 3. He was probably thinking of a fox was coming out, but... Yeah, if, if that crash happened like two seconds later, he probably would have noticed the badger was there. And then he would have been more prepared for it. With that, Classic Metal ties up the series 1-1. One one. What a game, yeah, that was... That was this definitely like just your standard tier 3 rush right there. <laughs> we got our badger game. Like, the last game happened, the crash happened, and I think, I think it would have ended in the same way. Just because Zeno doesn't really have the burst unit to stop the Badger like that. And again, it comes down to Micro. Badger being one of the uh, more fun units to Micro in the game, because they have that Agile trait. They can move and shoot at the same time. So that's usually what you see a player do. You kind of get your army into engagement, and then you just start moving that Badger around, avoiding danger, getting in, in the face of your opponent's uh, units, and just kind of shows the strength of, of something like that. So it was a really good... Uh, do or die moment for for both players basically. Zeno you know, had to make it work off the engagement that he had, and then Classic Metal had to survive just long enough to get that badger out, and he managed to do it in the end. All right, game two. We're going to see the same decks from both sides again. Mirror match. Here we go. And I really hope Zeno um, is going to be able to find a way to respond a little bit better to this one. But here we yeah, go. I wonder both sides literally starting off the same side of the map again, but different map this time. I'll be curious to see if Classic Metal decides to do it again. I mean, that, that Tier 3 rush seems to be pretty strong these days. He definitely went for the, the classic Tier 3 rush, where he went super light on any other kind of Warrens and just put that put that Badger down as soon as humanly possible. It was just a good map for him to rush that on. And Zeno kind of spurred it along by bringing his units to the forefront, and that unfortunately costed him. He was trying his hardest to just kill that mill as soon as possible, but then that Badger came up, and it was kind of the end of that. So right now, hopefully he won't make the same mistake here. There's a lot more space for him to scout out this time. No hidden areas that Classic Metal can use to get that tier 3 rush. So he's going to have to play this one pretty standardly. Both sides will have to in any case. Sitting well, here on pretty even farm pretty... so far. 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, Classic's going up. He queued up his 8th. This map is pretty interesting in that there's several ways to attack. Like You have this little space across the water down to the south. Then you have this gigantic road that wraps around to the high ground to the north side of the map. So it's going to be very interesting to see how these two... Oh, okay. Snake All rush. right. Tier 2 before anything else <laughs> off 7 farms. Zeno is bringing the memes, and we're going to see if he can do it. Oh I, you know, I've, I feel like I've casted a replay where someone did this, and it worked out well for, well for them, but man, it was not easy. It was not easy to pull off what Zeno is trying this to do is... right now. I'm sort of surprised he didn't go pigeons first and support the snakes, but I guess also you want the squirrels to defend the front line. But like, Classic Metal knows that there's a tier two coming now. Like, he could probably abuse that by just by like, I'm um, gearing up for it. He's gonna go build up his pigeons first, just making sure. Oh no, no, he's gonna build his own tier two. Oh yeah, and I think I mean he's got to know that it's probably snakes because, I mean skunks just don't do well on their own, and so he's got to be assuming that if Zeno's running the sim a similar deck, that he's probably starting out with these early snakes. So. Overall, Classic Metal's in a lead army-wise. He's got nine squirrels to the three of Zeno, and they're each going up to two snakes. Uh, obviously, Zeno's going to have an initiative advantage on when his snakes get out. Now, this is an interesting thing. Zeno has to attack now, but this is a little scary. Classic Metal does have a lot of units defending here, and that can, they can take out the snake very easily, and they're going to see Zeno double back just a little bit here just to make sure he can gather up his army before he moves on forward. Double snakes now is a different story. This is going to be a little bit hard for... Um, Classic Metal to actually defend against, and now with the Pigeon coming by to support them, Classic Metal has to defend here. This is a bit of a tough engage path for Zeno. He's going to decide to go off over the bridge and retreat back to the high ground when things get too tight. Classic Metal does not have Pigeons, though. The only thing he has for healing is passive healing. So he has to make sure that he can disengage just in time. He will start to get his first Pigeon worn out right now. And Zeno could not attacking at the moment, so this is going to allow that pigeon to come out very safely. Instead, Zeno going to go for the expansion to make sure he gets his farm up. But here comes Classic Metal's army. 
And as from before, Xeno's just kind of got a little bit behind on his army production, so Classic Metal's heading into this engagement with just Ooh. generally more units. That bait, he was trying to bait Classic Metal to attack in the middle, but not quite enough. Oh no, Ooh. no pigeons yet! That snake is dead instantly! Now that is going to turn the tide of this engagement at the very beginning. It's going to kind of file down Classic Metal's teeth. And Classic Metal responding a little bit too late with the pigeons here right now. Going to lose both the snakes here. Oh, Xeno also loses his own snake. Classic Metal, like we said, the... The guy who loves his squirrels here has a lot of squirrels right now, and Zeno is unfortunately supply blocked. Eight pigeons to uh, ten pigeons now. Uh, sorry, eleven squirrels now to the three of Zeno. Uh, I think with these warrens taking up the time, I think that he might be okay against this uh, aggression at least from defense. But losing all those warrens in that mill is definitely no. going to set him into a tough spot. The problem is also he had to solve some squirrel warrants in order to get the snakes back up and running because they were supply blocked for a good amount of time here. So army count is definitely in the favor of Classic Metal right now. 15 squirrels, two snakes on the way. This is really bad for Xeno now. And the Toads can't do anything. They're getting hit before they can even get their explosions off. He's trying to protect this one single snake left with this one single pigeon. But there's just too much damage on the side of Classic Metal. Xeno pushed too hard himself earlier on. And now, Cosmo, he's not going to go for the throw. He doesn't want to finish it off quite yet, it looks like. When you're ahead, get more ahead. I think that's what he's trying to do. Uh, though I'm surprised not to see him take down a Grismal or something. So I think he's probably just going to resupply on his Tier 2s, let these Squirrel numbers build back up, and then try to push in for the final blow here. I think he could have just finished it off right there and then. This is the last match of a, of a disqualifying Swiss tournament. So I think he's just trying to make sure he's really got it 100%. This is a little bit scary for Zeno still. He has eight farms, but we're like 10 seconds away from the first four farms dying now. So he has to be, he has to act fast. He needs to think of a plan. This is where like, okay, mole rush go all the way in, but there's no moles on his side. So he just has to sit here and defend as hard as possible. But it's looking real bleak right now, just by sheer number counts for classic metal. Maybe he kills off the commander? No, not quite. He has pigeon healing, he also has passive healing as well. Nothing that can really be done. That snake, no pigeon healing on top of that at all whatsoever, he's gonna die! Xeno loses his first snake and that's gonna be huge for him! As Classic Metal just gonna swarm his way through. He does lose his snake in the process, but Classic Metal has an entire platoon of squirrels at his beck and call. In the back out though, doesn't want to commit to it quite yet. But again, lots of damage done to Xeno. He's down to two farms, he sold off the snake warren. And now he's just on starvation mode right now. I'm not sure if I see a path back for Xeno, no matter what Classic Metal does. It's just kind of like, it's almost like he's playing with his food at this point. Uh, and sure enough, Xeno's going to tap out right it. away. Classic Metal gets his spot, I believe, because of this match. 2-1 to one against Xeno and Coop. That game 2, I'm pretty sure would have gone the same way if it was a replay or not. So that was still a win in Classic Metal with that Tier 3 Badger Rush. But great plays coming up from Classic Metal, just overtaking Xeno Akut.